Did you know the average person needs to consume around 4 pounds of food a day to feel satisfied? Okay, look, here's the thing about calorie density. Who's having the uranium diet? You better stand up and come to the front of the class right now. Yeah, don't even try to hide. We all know you glow in the dark. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going back into r slash fat logic, and if you would like to show your support for the channel, be sure to like the video, comment down below during the video, and start up a good old discussion, and if you have not already, subscribe. Let's go. A dieting body is a starving body. Okay, but what if the person just likes to eat healthy food in general? Although, to be honest, I really feel most gym-based exercises are just as functionally useless, and gym culture itself is predominantly a toxic mix of fat phobia, ableism, racism, misogyny, and an unexamined tie to militarism. Alrighty, explain to me how race comes into losing weight. There's no sign saying that you're not allowed to come into this gym, so honestly, try to explain this to me. I'm curious. Real women have curbs, fupa, stretch marks, and love handles. Yep, that's right, you are not a woman unless you have any of these requirements. Not anything else, absolutely nothing else, nope, you just tried gatekeeping being a woman, didn't you? You must be a fun person at parties. I love chubby girls. Skinny girls looks like they are sick and incapable of birthing and raising offspring. Okay, first off, you kinda sound like you're not gonna get anything whatsoever. Secondly, people can have their preferences. If you like chubby people, you like chubby people. Just don't try to bring down people that aren't your preference. 95% of diets fail. Well, they don't. They're not meant to make you thin. They're meant to make you end up fatter than you were before you started. They're meant to make you feel like it's just because you didn't have willpower. So you'll start another diet. It's an industry. I kind of feel like the majority of it is due to the fact that people see sudden progress and then they reward themselves and because of that reward, they bounce back to what they were before so then they lose motivation and they think it's not possible for them. To the government, I was wondering how long it would take until the next fear tactic would appear and pr Presto, here it is, obesity again. When all else fails, let's get the public frightened of fat. After all, it's the only remaining acceptable prejudice. A frightened and distracted public isn't easy to rule public, so it's gone from stay at home, save lives, to stay alert, to wear your mask, now to fear fat. Never mind the huge train wreck of an economy or the huge job losses to be experienced. Oh, and just forget about the global pedophile ring that includes some top brass, and the money being made by sale of PPE, a reasonable bit of which is from China. Is it really a fear tactic if your doctor tells you you're gonna die at 35 if you keep these habits up? Skinny shaming isn't the same as fat shaming because skinny people will never lose out on opportunities, careers, relationships, friendships purely because of their size. It has nothing to do with personal insecurities. It's how fat people are viewed by society as a whole. Yep, that's right, it shares half of the words in the phrase, but it's completely different. I used to hate people who said foods were very filling or too rich because I thought they were made up terms to shame what fat people eat. Now that I've been dieting, I have experienced these sensations for the first time. Yeah, it actually is very true. There are some things that are type of like an appetite curvers, and I love those things because I can just have a little bit and I don't feel the need or urge to want to eat throughout the day. Mostly for myself, I found it in those protein bars. Eat what you want when you are truly hungry and stop when you are full. Eat exactly what appeals to you. Do this instead of any diet and you're likely to maintain a healthy weight and avoid eating disorders. Okay, let me get this straight. So instead of going for something that is set up to have a specific amount of calories, portions, and everything to be what I need, go to an all-you-can-eat buffet and then eat until you are absolutely filled. That is gonna be what, yeah, that's definitely the healthier option, right? I'm gonna need you to take obese out of your vocabulary and change it too fat. The first one is a slur, the latter is not. Also, people can be fat or more reasons than just the food they eat. Some have health conditions and others are just simply fat. It's not a bad thing. Okay, but why do you need to censor out the word obese? Some mostly thin body positive activists have congratulated CBD and Tipton for what they see as positive choices to benefit their health. Others, mostly fat activists, have responded with frustration or anger at losing two of the very very few very fat people who have a 
ascended such great heights. These losses cut deep, not because of their individual decisions about their own bodies, but because it reminds fat people of how we are seen, and often how we are forced to see ourselves. The way in which we are expected to sacrifice our bodies for the comfort of those around us. And listen, I don't care if you won't date fat people. Honestly, if you hold such an intense disgust about fat bodies, good riddance, stay away. God knows we don't need more abuse in our lives. But the reality is that your prejudice is not confined to your inability to find us attractive for dating. That is your own fantasy. As Caleb Luna said recently, I can tell if people are or are not attracted to fat people and how they treat me, even in professional and medical context. It is not all about socks or dating. So I guess what I'm saying is that your bigotry is showing, darling, and it is not a good look on you. Be better. So what you're saying is that you're not going to judge me by my preferences, but at the same time you are. Right? Many of us can initially lose weight via dieting, but in order to maintain weight loss in the longer term, the majority of individuals would need to maintain disordered eating habits. Not to mention, this desire for weight loss is driven from a place of unworthiness, and this unworthiness will never be healed by being in a smaller body. We have to look at what we are giving up in order to lose weight and question whether that is truly worth our time and energy. We have to take a close look at our situation and assess whether it's really giving us the fulfillment we crave. Most often, it is not. Thin, able-bodied people love to moralize health and tell fat people that they are evil for daring to love their bodies despite being fat because they say that they are encouraging obesity and that they should want to be healthy. And the reason they do this is that they bought into the delusion that because they are thin and able-bodied, they must be doing things better or more correctly than fat or disabled people. They are convinced that we did something wrong, that we eat way more than they do, and that we don't take care of our bodies, that we must not exercise enough, do enough, care enough. They believe that they are somehow immune to chronic illness or disability or fatness because of the calories they make alone. It never occurs to them that this is nothing more than a lottery of genetics, circumstances, and a sheer dumb luck. They must cling to this delusion of being better than unhealthy people or confront the fact that we are not actually different and their existence isn't more useful or important or justified than ours. Look, I got no problem with people feeling confident loving their bodies. I'm pretty certain I've said that a few times already. It's just that when you try to say that you're healthier than somebody who has gone to the gym constantly and is in the best physical shape of their life, that no, that doesn't make any sense. And instead of saying, hey, congratulations on your excellent work, you try to bring them down and question why they did it in the first place. Can we also please acknowledge that appearance of overweight, over what weight, and obesity, pointless uncensoring, based on BMI, is A, no indicator of health or lifestyle of the person being judged, B, racist in origin and never meant to be applied to individuals, and C, ableist as frick, how is weight racist? Diets don't work, or they wouldn't exist exist. Health is not the currency we pay for existence and respect. Eat less, move more has done more to damage than it has to heal. Stigma is more toxic than processed food. This debate and ongoing moral outrage is extremely violent and triggering to a lot of my friends with larger bodies. It is shot that feeding isn't mentioned in their rhetoric. I've also shot to live with people telling you how you're going to die every moment you're alive. I mean, nobody's immortal so yeah, there's that, but I would like to live as long as possible. Oh, and please explain to me how this is racist for me to lose weight. We live in a society where the rich intentionally deny themselves food in the pursuit of thinness, while the impoverished are denied food without a choice. So what you're saying is if I have a million dollars in the bank, I need to be buying a million dollars worth of food for myself, right? Okay, but fat people are fat for a reason, because of eating disorders and depression. It's having an unhealthy love for food. I eat less than my skinny friends, yet I'm still fat. It's not about having an unhealthy love for food, but go ahead and keep on with your fat phobia, but maybe do some research before talking nonsense. Okay then, riddle me this. If both of you eat a half pound of food, except one of you is a half pound of salad, the other one's a half pound of pizza, um, one of you is gonna lose weight and one of the others is gonna gain weight. There's a fine line between how much you put in your body and what exactly you're putting in your body. 
These replies show that y'all don't actually know what body positivity is and feel that you must always center yourself. Yes, anyone of any size can be insecure, but the point of body positivity is accepting, destigmatizing, and making the world a safer place for fat bodies. And mid-sized girls distorting their bodies, i.e. bending over to mimic a fat body in these name of reliability, does absolutely nothing to further that cause. Please grow up. Wasn't the body positivity movement originally for people with burn marks, like with actual physical disabilities, like, you know, losing an arm? So if you're tall, you deserve extra courtesy on your flight, even if that comes at the expense of other passengers' comfort. But if you're fat, you deserve to be removed from your flight if your body makes other passengers uncomfortable? I'm sorry, what? Wasn't it less about other passengers feeling uncomfortable and more about the plane being able to take off and land safely? Isn't that also the reason some people get charged for two seats? One last note before I end the video, that if you are struggling with weight, just think, it, sometimes other people are able to lose weight easier, but that does not mean it's impossible for you to do so. It might just take a little longer time, but that means you gotta stay motivated and you gotta remember that goal in mind. And just remember, baby steps are still steps in the right direction. And with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you would like to be absolutely amazing and supportive for everything the channel's been doing throughout the month of August, be sure to hit the like button, and if you have not already subscribed to the channel. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.